Uh, I'd like to move on to the next presentation by uh, Ms. Perdi, uh, and the presentation is outlined in CMD 14M 72.4. Uh, good morning. Um, my name is Margaret Prudy, and I'm a consultant uh, engaged by CNSE to undertake an independent evaluation of that organization's performance, and you've heard uh, much about already this morning. Um, first, a few words of introduction, I think, to tell you who I am. I spent my entire federal government, uh, federal public service career in, in and around, moving around the organizations that comprise Canada's national security, emergency management, public safety, national defense, intelligence uh, community. I retired, so to speak, in uh, 2006 and uh, formed a company that continues to provide strategic advice to public sector uh, clients on those particular matters. Uh, I'm proud to say that CNSC has been one of my uh, clients in, in recent years and I can assure commission members that from my perspective, CNSC takes emergency management very seriously uh, and it has an approach that is based on uh, not just doing it and moving on, but on continuous uh, improvement. Um, I'm not really going to speak to this uh, second slide. It's been already covered uh, uh, very eloquently by OPG and, and Health Canada. However, I must say that uh, I've been, as I said, I've been working in and around emergency management programs for uh, about 40 years. and. This unified response was, in my view, the most ambitious, the uh, most bold exercise I have ever uh, witnessed in this country, and the most professionally organized and most sophisticated. So I, I offer congratulations to OPG and, and Health Canada for making this happen against, I'm sure, uh, difficult circumstances at times. Slide three uh, summarizes my specific remit, uh, and that was to provide an independent perspective on CNSC's performance during the May exercise, not its entire performance, uh, uh, but rather its engagement at the strategic level in the areas that are uh, shown on this slide in, in the first bullet. I had full access to people and places and documents throughout the three, ex three days, and I took steps after the exercise to uh, try to fill in some of the blanks because I was, could not possibly be everywhere uh, all the time. I believe uh, Commission members have received my evaluation report, uh, so this morning I just want to focus on principal findings and recommendations. Every exercise has artificialities and limitations, uh, so this slide is not a criticism. Um, even the most sophisticated exercises, uh, such as this one, have to, you have to draw the line somewhere. Um, so this slide really points to some decisions that were taken at the design phase that meant that CNSC and, and other participants were not fully tested uh, in such areas as support to deputy ministers, support to ministers, international relations, or the response and recovery phase. In the middle of the slide, I introduce, I guess, what is a recurring theme in my report, and that is that responding to um, the impact on Canada of the 2011 Fukushima incident, I think was extremely useful in terms of preparing Canadian organizations to deal with a serious event uh, at one of our nuclear power plants. But it didn't come close uh, to testing players to deal with the many challenges that would accompany a significant domestic nuclear emergency. Neither did exercise unified response. Again, that's not a criticism. Uh, that wasn't the intent of the exercise, but it is, I think you have to keep reminding yourselves as, as we go forward and think about what actions to take, that a domestic event would take um, all the responding organizations, including the Commission, into a whole other dimension. We, have, we hope we never have to get, get there or do that, uh, but it is something to think about. Overall, I was thoroughly impressed by CNSC engagement in this exercise not only over the three days, but also in terms of preparatory work, training, updating of policies and procedures, and so on. 
CNSC knew this was a unique opportunity and they took full advantage of it, up to and including President Binder and his senior team. Indeed, CNSC was, in, both in terms of numbers and dedication, I think, among the most engaged of any federal entity throughout the exercise. And that, ex that engagement was serious, it was professional, and it was genuine. As I say, I think on this slide, it, it really felt real over the three days. Regulatory responsibilities were CNSC's preoccupation, I think that's rightly so. Uh, communications and collaboration with OPG were constant, proper, and productive. CNSC monitored the operator's actions diligently and used its regulatory powers when it uh, deemed necessary. My only negative comment is minor and it relates to what appeared to be an old-fashioned way in which uh, technical data uh, moved to and from the regulator and the operator. CNSC was an active player interdepartmentally at the federal level, and I give some examples of that on, on this slide. Uh, overall, I think that um, the exercise to, uh, displayed a high level of integration of responses under the, both the FINEP and the, uh, the FERP that um, um, my fellow presenter from Health Canada has explained. Um, there was, however, much more, and quite, quite deliberately so, much more attention on validating this new plan, the, the Federal Nuclear Emergency Plan, that, and so there was focus on the technical and scientific aspects and support to the overall response, and much more so than on intergovernmental, uh, interdepartmental, and international relations. Again, in a real situation on Canadian soil, um, the demands on and the expectations of CNSC in these particular areas, I think, would have been enormous. The next two slides uh, summarize my observations with respect to CNSC's role as, quote, the on-site authority. The exact language in the FNAP is provided at the bottom of this page. And I think as Commission members know well, uh, the actions taken on site in the first 24 to 72 hours are critical in terms of preventing and or mitigating off-site impacts on public health and the environment. And during these critical hours, the only federal player with an on-site presence and nuclear power plant expertise will be the CNSC. And CNSC partners would expect CNSC not only to contribute to technical assessments jointly, but also to help them understand what is happening and what's likely to happen so they can make appropriate plans uh, for various scenarios in the coming days and, and weeks. The Health Canada presentation, I think, identified this as strategic planning and, and an area for improvement. The top of slide nine provides a snapshot of some of what I think would be happening uh, across Canada and around the world as day one of the scenario that OPG described unfolded. Against this background, I think Commission members and federal ministers would look to, would have looked to CNSC as the most authoritative source of forward-looking situational awareness and risk assessment. Not in the detailed technical sense, but overall, what's happening, what's likely to happen, what's the worst case scenario, uh, what can be done to mitigate that scenario. This element of CNSC's response was really not tested in extensively uh, during the exercise. Certainly, um, both Health Canada and CNSC provided uh, this kind of guidance at the public safety-led uh, Assistant Deputy Minister phone call uh, meetings that took place. But I think the exercise overall raised questions about CNSC's role under the FINEP as this on-site authority and questions about what partners expect from CNSC in this role. Again, bearing in mind that the exercise focused primarily on technical and, and scientific support to the emergency response, uh, CNSC did a good job, I think, in sharing technical reports directly with the uh, technical advisory group and was an active virtual member of, of that tag. This slide, uh, slide 10, indicates that many, many organizations, and I think the earlier presentations have displayed this, many organizations had roles related to uh, measuring, uh, understanding uh, public health impacts, environmental impacts, deciding on off-site protective measures. Subsequently, I don't think it's surprising that the exercise identified, I think, some opportunities for improvement around data collection, modeling techniques, public announcements. 
uh, I concluded that CNSC's role in this area may not be clearly understood, and I did point to my perceived discrepancies between the internal CNSC nuclear emergency plan and the FNEP itself. Uh, OPG, I think, touched on the uh, need for clarification of these roles and responsibilities uh, as well. The public communications component of CNSC's emergency response will be crucial, I think, because of the pervasive fear factor, um, the overall res public communications response, uh, the generally low public uh, understanding in Canada of nuclear matters, the proximity of Canadian plants to the U.S. border, and so on. I think the CNSC communications team did an outstanding job during the exercise. They collaborated with all players all the time. Uh, they tested their own um, uh, responses across their entire mandate, including uh, social media, which is increasingly important in these kinds of events. But here again, I did spot inconsistency between CNSC's internal response plan and the FNEP in terms of which organizations will be the main or the primary sources of public and media information uh, on on-site conditions, uh, emergency response, and protective um, actions. I think uh, the OBG uh, lessons learned also identified some lessons learned in this regard. Final area I examined was internal uh, governance and decision-making within CNSC. Uh, this section of the, my report focuses mainly on the quality and relevance of materials, briefing materials provided to the emergency executive team here at CNSC. As I point out on this slide, President Binder and his senior officials took this role very seriously. They met 14 times over three days and again for a, um, a so-called hot wash immediately following the exercise. As I understand it, Commission members were aware of the exercise, but there was a decision not to engage you directly. So a few uh, final slides that summarize my principal recommendations. Um, with respect to these roles as on-site authority and role for, in terms of public health impacts and protective measures, my recommendations really focus on CNSC clarifying these matters with uh, their partners uh, who have lead responsibilities for the Federal Nuclear Emergency Plan and the Federal Emergency Response Plan. I think as Fukushima illustrates, the emergency response to a serious nuclear power plant incident doesn't end when the on-site situation is generally under control. A multitude of headaches and, and challenges have to be managed in the restoration recovery phase sometimes stretching years and even decades. The FNEP specifically excludes planning for this phase, and, and I understand uh, why, but I do think it is, these are topics that do need attention, uh, at least to identify the areas that would, will need attention uh, during recovery and uh, restoration, decisions that will be required, resources that might be marshaled, uh, the organization that will be in place, uh, put in place to manage it. With respect to uh, public communications, uh, again, I, I recommend that CNSC initiate dialogue uh, with uh, FNEP and FERP uh, lead departments to ensure a shared understanding of federal responsibilities during an abestic uh, emergency management and how CNSC can meet its statutory requirements, which you know well in terms of one of the two main objects in the legislation uh, establishing CNSC are to do with public dissemination of information, how you can meet that obligation while still being a uh, viable and constructive partner in the overall public uh, communication effort by the federal government. I also recommend sustained attention to identifying and training federal spokespersons, an area that the exercise touched on, but really only lightly. With respect to the international nuclear and radiation uh, events scale, um, just, oh, those who don't know, it's a worldwide tool that's used to communicate the safety significance of an event. I recommend that CNSC review its procedures, including whether there should be a role for the emergency uh, executive team in assigning ratings to events in Canada. You'll recall that was a controversial ex aspect of the Japanese response to Fukushima, and it did generate considerable uh, confusion. Slide 15 summarizes my main recommendations with respect decision-making and capacity. I think it would be prudent to include Commission members in future exercises of this type. 
The remaining um, recommendations relate mainly to, they're very internal to CNSC and they're aimed at providing the best possible support to senior decision makers. Finally, I think CNSC should conduct a full review of its online connectivity, its use of information technology during an emergency, including exploring the feasibility of direct data feeds from all nuclear, Canadian nuclear uh, power plants. So to summarize, um, I commend CNSC for maximizing its participation in this exercise. Its performance was serious and, and professional and it should give Commission members a high level of confidence in CNSC's um, readiness and certainly in, a, in its uh, preparedness to take on the lessons learned and to uh, continue on uh, this continuous improvement program that I have uh, seen. So that concludes my presentation. I'd be pleased to take your questions. Thank you.